This is an introduction to the Build Your Own Classifier video that uh, Professor Witten does. So uh, he says that we're supposed to open up uh, this file, the Segment Challenge database. And uh, actually, I'm going to open that up with, uh, just to read about it, I'm going to open it up in Notepad++. So it's this is... Um, a database that was created a while ago. Um, and the idea, well, there were pictures from, uh, of bricks, of the sky, of foliage, of cement, of windows, path, I guess that means a path in the, in the woods or something like that, and uh, grass. So then what we want to do is take um, pick, uh, sections of these pictures. So I looked up some pictures here. So here is brick face. So take a section of this, like say from a square section like that, a brick face. Take, a, take square sections of foliage. Take square sections of pixels. And somehow we're supposed to start with those sections and then figure out is this cement is this uh foliage is this brick face and so on so the categories are um here these are the categories so there's uh seven categories that we're trying to classify our data into now, just like all our every other data set, we have rows of data. That is, we have instances of data. So what are going to be the instances here? So they're going to take a, a uh, three by three region. I guess that means three pixels by three pixels. So remember, a pixel is just a dot in the image, like um, just a single dot in this image but we're going to take three by three pixels, so nine pixels at a time. And those are going to be uh, the instances. So we're going to have many different instances, like we could have many three by threes here in this, from this set, and many three by threes from this picture, and many three by threes from this picture. So we can have many three by three images, and thus many uh, instances. Now with each of those instances, we said we're going to have many of them, we can look at various attributes of the instances. So we can example, for example, take the, what they say this, which is the column of the center pixel of the region. So if we have a three by three uh, grid, then there's going to be a center piece in there, right? So, and that's going to come from a certain part of the whole image. So the whole image, for example, I take a little three by three here and I look at the center of the center pixel and I say, what column does that come from, from the entire image? And then also what row does it come from, from the entire image? So that kind of locates where this uh, instance comes from in so, you know, does it come from the side? Does it come from the center? Maybe that makes a difference somehow. Anyway, that's what... The, so here we have the, the column and the row for, for that instance. And the next thing is the region pixel count. Well, since they're all uh, three by three, that's always going to be nine. So it's kind of useless to put that in there, but for some reason they have it in there. Uh, Short line density dash five. Well, apparently they have some kind of algorithm which tells them how many lines are in this three by three, I guess. To be honest, I don't quite understand this one. Maybe you can figure it out because if we're taking three by three pixels, then how can you have a, a line of length Five. So I'm not quite sure about that one. But anyway, somehow they're counting how many lines are there. Or maybe this 
Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that means. So perhaps we'd have to go back and do some research about these guys. This was done in 1990 and see if we could find more information about this, more description. And this one also, I'm not quite sure. What about veg mean? Okay, anyway, it's a little bit hard to figure out what all of this is, but each one of these is some attribute of the image. So there's intensity mean, the average intensity of the image, of the three by three, I guess. Uh, the raw red, how much, somehow, how much red is in the image? How much blue is in? How much green is in? Um, and so on. Okay, so if you're interested, then you could try and seek out the details of how, of what all of these mean exactly. Okay, but in any case, we have 19, for each instance, we have 19 attributes that we measure about it. And then, of course, we have the classification for it. So it might be brick face, it might be sky, and so on. So that is what we have down here. So here's that nine. Every, each one was nine. They're all nine. So we have all of this and then path. So this, can, this was a picture of a path. And this was a picture of grass. And this was a picture of foliage. And so on. So we have how many instances here? Some 16, whatever, This maybe not quite this many because there's a bunch of comments up at the beginning. But anyway, a bunch of instances we have. Okay, now he does refer to another data set as well, and that is this one. The seg so we just looked at segment challenge, but also the segment test. Now if we look at that, it's the same kind of data again. And how many are there? Mm. 210 elements. So what he's done here is he's split the data into training and testing. So th uh, this is the test data and the segment challenge data will be the training data. So instead of splitting it you know, having Weka take the data set and split it, he's already split it into two separate files. Okay, so in that case, we won't use um, <clears throat> this button anymore to split it because we could, but we, we're we not going to do that way. We're going to uh, take the um, test set from a different file. Okay, so the way you do that is you go up to here and you choose your test set. So if you have a test set in a separate file, you can use this and you can set it to be segment test, okay? So now we're gonna do it that way instead of splitting our single file. So coming back to this uh, page, uh, this um, tab, preprocess tab up here, uh, we can see that if we look at the class, we can see that these are the different classes, and here they are. Okay, so we have 205 brick-faced images, uh, images that come from brick-face, uh, 300 instances that come from sky pictures, 208 that come from foliage, and so on. Okay, now he is going to ask us to use a certain classifier which he calls the user classifier. And I looked in my list, he said it's a tree, and I click on tree, and I don't see user classifier here. So in that case, you might be, we might be able to install it, and that's, we go to this interface here, and we go to tools and package manager. So you click that, and then you can search for user classifier. So these are all with user. Here it is, user classify. And I click install. So 
So I have to close this window, unfortunately. It says it was installed, but uh, let's try it again. User classify, install, let's try uninstall. And then look, I might need to, anyway, I'll try it again. User classify install. Yes. Okay. Okay, now I'll close this. Go back to the explorer. Find the file. I put a shortcut for Weka right here on my desktop, so I'll go to that. And uh, segment challenge open. Classify, let's see if it's there. Yeah, okay, so it's there. So we'll need, you'll, you might need to do that. So user classifier. So we have our data here, and we are in the classify, and we can, we've selected user classify, and uh, we, I have to reset this. Oh. Segment uh, test. <clears throat> okay. So now we start the user classifier. Now, whenever Weka is working, the uh, this little bird at the bottom right of the screen here will will be moving. So actually, in this case, it doesn't stop moving until we finish. So let's click start. So, so we see this and now we click on data visualizer. So here we apparently have, this is some kind of graph and uh, there's an, uh, if there's a graph, there's two axes. And we might wonder, well, we might want to, I mean, of course, we want to know what are these axes. So here, the x-axis is one of the variables, and we can select a different variable for the x-axis. And the y-axis is for uh, another of the variables, and we can select a different uh, variable for that axis. So we can conveniently graph lots of, make lots of graphs uh, Related, uh, comparing two different variables. Okay, so, uh, and then of course the colors uh, are probably, most probably the classes. So what could we do to see that? So here I've selected the, the x-axis to be class, and so there I can see that the color, the blue color is brick face, the red color is sky, and so on. So the colors are the classes. So looking at this graph, going back to here, and looking at this graph, I can see that actually the colors are fairly well separated here. And that is always a good thing in, in visualization. So what, why is it a good thing? So what I can see is that uh, as this axis, it's not separated basically according to this axis. So if, if I look at just here, I see many colors. But if I look at just this axis and I look here, I see only that brown color or red color, whatever it is, uh, more or less. So that tells me that this axis, the y-axis, which is what? This one. The centroid row, which is kind of surprising. Um, uh, depending on where it is, that's rather strange, actually. Uh, but depending on whether the centroid row is at uh, a low row or it's getting higher and higher, that means the, uh, I think that means where it is located in the picture determines what kind of object it is. Maybe I have the wrong um, interpretation of this variable because that sounds very strange. But anyway, this axis, the data separates fairly nicely, and that's a good thing as we'll see. 
Now, he decides to do to he decides to do the the row this the row. Uh, I was looking at the column before. Okay, anyway, uh, the row. Oh, and uh, the here he does the intensity mean. Okay, now this also separates the dots very well. So why is that good? Because that means that if, for example, suppose I say, now this uh, x-axis is centroid row. So if the centroid row of the um, instance is in this range here, for example, and the uh, y-axis, the intensity mean, is in this range here, what can we say? So if the centroid row is in this range and the intensity mean is in this range, means it's always going to be red. That means we've come up with a way or a rule to predict when it's going to be red. What was red? I think it was sky or something. I forget. But it's going to be always red. Maybe it's going to be always sky. So that's a very, that's a very strong rule because it's almost perfect. Like if it's in this range and if the y-axis is in this range, how many errors are we going to make? Well, this would be an error because we would say, we would say, oh, if it's in this range and it's in this range, then we're going to predict that it's red, but it's, this is actually not red. So this, I think that's not red. Maybe it is red. Uh, maybe, maybe they're all red. So then there would be no errors. Or suppose I went down to here and up to there, then I have just one error. So that would be a misclassification in my rule that I'm going to make. Okay. And then, of course, we could do something similar. We could talk about this range, and we could talk about maybe this range, and so on. And you're not limited to uh, selecting. This would be basically selecting a rectangle. When you do from here to here and from here to here, that's a rectangle. That gives you a rectangular region. But you can also be more flexible in the selection. But let's, uh, let's go on. So let's look at, let's use the rectangular selection tool and start up here and select all of these. Now maybe they're all red. Okay, now let's click submit. So that's one step you have to follow. Once you select, you click Submit. Okay, now what happened was it took away all those dots, and it also rescaled the axis because the axis because maybe maybe it didn't rescale too much. Well, it probably did, but anyway, it might have rescaled the axis. Okay, now let's go and check the tree visualizer, and maybe we should do that. And what we did is we um, were looking at the, the two axes were row, row centroid, I'm sorry, region centroid row and intensity mean. So that's what it puts up here to indicate that we were using those two axes or those two variables. Uh, and what we did is when those two variables were um, in a certain range, uh, determined by the row that we selected, I'm sorry, determined by the rectangular that, that we so selected, then wh when it was in that rectangular region, that means true, versus when it was not in that rectangular region. So when it was in that rectangular region, it was all the same color. I guess that red was sky. So we got 220 instances versus zero. I think that's what this means. So all of them were of the same type. They were all sky. Now, of course, in the other region, the, re the region that wasn't that part of that, wasn't the rectangular region, everything outside of that, there are going to be many types of images, not sky, though. Or maybe maybe there are some sky. No, no we got all the sky. So there's going to be brick-faced and foliage. Uh, there's going to be brick-faced foliage and so on. Okay. 
So now we can do it again. So go back to here and we can try selecting another region, rectangular region. Now we're not stuck with rectangular, we can use other regions, but uh, let's try, say I go here and like that. Okay, now it's not perfect. Not, uh, it's not what they call a pure node. This new node that we're gonna create is not gonna be a pure node because we can see that there's some yellow in there and some of this blue but we'll just uh, select, uh, submit it, and let's see what the tree looks like now. Okay, so now, uh, it, if we were in the first region, we had all sky, and then we chose to split Again, with the same variables, but we could have changed the variables, the, the axes of the graph, and that might have given us a better uh, separation. But anyway, we didn't. So if we're in the new rectangle that we created, then uh, mostly it was path. We saw that there were some other colors, which I guess were cement and grass. And then we have what's not in that second rectangular region either, and that's what's left over here. So then we can do it again. And now we can try this blue. Oh, maybe it's something like that. So what we're doing is we're saying, um, if the instance has this variable and this variable in a certain range, then try to do a classification. So it's going to try to do a classification here, or it's going to, uh, so let's look at that. We have to submit it. And we go to here. No. So we have that. So now it's again splitting on, on, a, um, on the same set of variables. And if it's true, we have 116 of one color and, hmm, did we get that much in the other? Maybe I didn't do such a good job but of selecting. But anyway, this is the uh, purity of this, of this sec, uh, second rule. I'm sorry, this last rule. And then we still have this left over. So we go back again. Now we can select all this blue, light blue here. So we can do uh, uh, select, maybe like that, and submit it. And then we can do another select, maybe here, and submit that, and then do another one here. And maybe let's try polygon mm, actually I don't oh, I messed it up uh, I don't know how to stop it let's see okay maybe I hit clear and try it again oh, like that And then like that, and then like, I don't know how to get it to stop. So I'll just go back to the rectangle. Maybe you can figure out how to get it to stop. So that we have that, submit it. Green one, a little bit tricky, but I'll try something. Like that, submit. And then the last one, I guess we can do. Now, as we said before, before I do that, um, we could change the axes 
to see if we get something better that splits better. And uh, there's some way to do that here. So these are the different axes. These represent the different axes, actually. So maybe this axis. So he said if you right-click here and say left-click here, mm, doesn't do such a good job. Anyway, so uh, let's just select it and submit it and leave it at that. So here's our tree. And then, so this is our tree. And so now we can go back to here and accept the tree. So that we have accepted our so now we can go back and we and since we accepted it it ran it as though it was it's a classifier just like any other classifier and we can see how good or how bad we did and this is the same kind of confusion matrix so remember that for the confusion matrix you have as classified is up here and this is what the actual instances. So again, uh, if you have a one here, that means that it, it was actually a window, but it was classified in this column, which is the grass column. Okay, so it made a mistake. Now we can go back here and we can see that we got 81%. So this is a classifier. And let's go back and look at the tree again, which you can do by clicking here and visualize the tree. And this is the tree. And normally we have, before, uh, we would have that we were splitting on a particular variable. But here we're splitting on a pair of variables. Uh, and normally we would know the value of the number of uh, where we were splitting. So like, uh, suppose we were talking about the sepal length uh, was the first variable. Then we would say, is sepal length less than five or greater than five or something like that. So we would know the value of that variable where that we were splitting at. Uh, however, in this diagram, uh, we do, it does tell us the variables that we're splitting on. It's actually not just one variable, it's two, but it doesn't tell us the value. Like, but there is a value, right? When we went to, um, well, I don't have the, I'd have to run it again. I don't want to run it again. But uh, we took the the graph, we had the graph with the dots in it, and, uh, and we drew a rectangle. That rectangle selects a, cer a set of values for the two variables involved. These are the two variables that were involved in the first case, and actually in all cases. Um, and we, by selecting a rectangle, we were selecting a range for the x variable and a range for the y variable. That's what, you know, that's what a rectangle represents. So, we are selecting, it just doesn't tell us in this picture uh, what the range is. It would have been, I, I think it wouldn't have been bad to, to put it in here, uh, but somehow he chose not to include that in this visualization. So all we know is that we split on the rectangle. We don't really know where, uh, the range of values where the rectangle was, but uh, once we did that split, we know that, uh, for example, in the, we would predict that it's sky right? Uh, however, if we went to the other rectangle, um, or sorry, if we went outside the rectangle, we wouldn't, um, I think we're missing something in this picture. I'm going to go back and run it again, uh, because I, I, I can't see what I want to see here. So to run it again, I'm going to click start. I'm going to bring this up again. Go to the data visualizer, 
Now, we don't have to use the same variables that we used last time, but they did do a nice job of separating. So let's see if I can remember what that was. I think this was the row. I think this was the intensity. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a few of these. Just to, I think something was being obscured before. So I'm going to select it, this, and I'm going to do that. I'll do one or two more like this, like this one. I missed it, but anyway. Uh, okay. And I'll submit that, and maybe one more. Okay. Let's look at this again. Three. Okay, yeah. We couldn't see the other node very well, I think. Or maybe we did, actually. Anyway, so we split here. We split here uh, on it, and we this was actually a region of uh, the X, sorry, the region central row, some region of that, some part of that, and some part of this variable gave us the rectangle, and uh, this is the prediction. On the other case, uh, we don't uh, get a prediction yet. We split again, though, and we do get a pr prediction over here. And if we're not in that box, uh, we don't get a prediction yet, and we split again. So that's the way it works. So this is basically the same kind of classifier that we built with J48. Uh, J48 ten, tended to uh, split on just one variable at a time, but here we're splitting on two variables at a time. Maybe. It would be interesting to try and implement something that, that could split on more than one variable at a time that was like J48. I don't know of anything like that, but uh, maybe there is something like that. Maybe even J48 has that option, and I've never uh, explored it. But uh, typically, J48 will split just on one variable instead of on a pair of variables like we're doing here. I'm curious to know how well just this tree does. Probably not so well. Not as well as we did before, but let's see what happens. So, yes. Uh, I guess it's done. Uh, so how well did it do? Only 45% accuracy. So not so great. Okay, so that is an introduction to his video. I think now if you watch his video, it will be clear.